Hello, this is Andrew from Sprog DCC. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Today I'm going to look at the basic installation of Sprog 2 and JMRI software. We'll start on the Jimri website on the releases page. You can see down the left hand side a list of releases and we'll choose the most recent 5.4. This release requires Java 11 to work, so we'll click on the link and look at what's required to install Java 11. My choice is the OpenLogic JRE or Java Runtime environment, so we'll go to their page, select the version we want, Java 11, our operating system, architecture, 64-bit in this case, and we want the JRE package. We want to download an installer, in our case for Windows, so we're going to click on the MSI file. Choose the way you save it, and then wait for the download to finish. Then we can install the file that we've just downloaded, clicking through, accept the terms of license, next, and then at this stage it's very important to set the home variable and also to set the registry keys, otherwise you may have some issues in running JMRI. And then we can install Java. It takes a little while, eventually we get to the finish button and we're done. At this point we can open a Windows terminal and just check that the correct Java version is installed. And there we see it's version 11. Now we'll go back to the JMRI web page, scroll down and download our installation, in our case for Windows. Save the file somewhere and once the download is finished we can install it. Now you'll probably see this error, if you click on more info at run anyway, it will then run the installer. Just click through, clicking next each time, the defaults are usually good and then we'll just wait a few moments for it to install. And that's it, we've now successfully installed the JMRI software. The next step is to plug in the power supply. And then the USB cable for the Sprog. And to your computer you should hear the familiar Windows notification sound and see a pop-up showing that the Sprog is being installed. You will also notice the LEDs on the Sprog become active. The USB LED will flicker briefly when there is data flowing between the computer and the Sprog. The power LED stays on solid when idle, flashes slowly when the track power is on, and flashes quickly if there is an overload. Now have a look in the device manager just to check which COM port has been assigned to the Sprog and make a note of that for later use. If you have many devices connected, you may need to disconnect the Sprog temporarily and see which device disappears and reappears when it's connected. I'll show this by disconnecting and then reconnecting the Sprog. Next, we'll take a look at GMRI. So double click the icon to start Decoder Pro and then work through the wizard. For the system manufacturer, you should select Sprog DCC. And for the system connection, select Sprog. This will connect the Sprog as a programmer. The serial port should be set to the COM port that we memorised earlier from the device manager. And finish. And then you'll see the main screen open up. This is what's known as the roster view for Decoder Pro. Now it's time to connect the programming track to the track A and track B connectors on the Sprog. Those of you who are familiar with JMRI should be all set to go now using the Sprog to get the best out of all of your decoders. If you've never used JMRI before, then please look out for our next video, which will take you through your first use of JMRI. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to our channel and clicking the notification button so that you'll see all of our videos as they become available. Thank you.